We're, we're still on a little bit of social distancing, but we're going to talk engines today. And we're going to talk, and, and let's do some ground rules. First of all, this might run a little bit long. Engines take a little while to explain. There's a lot of opinions. So first rule of thumb, you're going to get our opinions based on what we've driven, what we like, what we don't like. That may not match everybody else's opinions, so take it for what it is. Now, Al Adkins, Mr. Fe out there, I purposely didn't bring Dave out here because he doesn't like Fe's as much as you do. So we're going to try to keep it fun. Uh, first up, so we're going to take for each engine, we're going to give you our opinions, and we got three push rod engines and two module engines. We're going to give you our opinion on value, looks, performance, drivability, fun. All opinions. Um, before I go too far, fuel injection and carburation. Here's my opinion on that. Uh, because all these cars have different induction systems. So I think carburation is cool. It looks cool, it's vintage cool, but fuel injection beats it every time for performance and drivability. Now there's two little kind of stepchilds in the industry. One is fuel injection stack injection systems. My opinion, throw them in the garbage, make a doorstop out of them. I've lost more money on stack injection systems than anybody wants to know about. They just don't work well. They don't, they're, they're like the carbureted version of fuel injection if you have. And the other one is carburetors. I know there's out there, there's guys who are gonna say it, and we love Webers. I hate Webers. They work wide open throttle, but for drivability, anything other than looks, Webers suck, okay? I got them in my car, but I'm just telling you, this is the way it's gonna be. And I'm, I'm gonna say some rules here. No rules. I wanna hear real, honest opinions. I so, think you just gave your pretty much. You just did it. You just did it, you spun well, up. It's gonna get worse. All right, <laughs> so come on over here, Dave. We got Dan and uh, let's, let's Dan over. The first engine we're going to talk about, push rod motor, it's the golden retriever of engines. It started our company, the old 5.0, the, the which is a 302. Yeah. Blueprint sells a 306 version of it. $3,200, how can you go wrong? Now, this is, uh, remember Ford's hyper eutectic pistons? Yep. It's a high silicon content aluminum piston. You got it. It enables tight tolerance engines. If anybody took apart an old 5.0, 150,000 mile engine, right? almost very little wear on the cylinder walls. Those engines didn't make a ton of horsepower. This motor is about the same, it's 235 horse. I think the old Mustang engines were 298 pounds feet of torque. This is 317, Yep. it's 30 over. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this engine? I put it in my son's car, because by the way, it's a fun engine. Tony's got a lot to say about this engine, but you give me the specs on this engine and where we are right now. Basically, this 302, the way it sits, especially the bang for the buck, you're gonna have a tough time beating this. Now remember, we're not talking some serious numbers here. Like Dave was saying, we've got 235, maybe 250 horse out of it. We got just over 300 foot pounds of torque, but remember what this is going in. Our cars weigh a little more than one ton, 22, maybe 2,400 pounds. That power to weight ratio is beginning to rival my GT350 I just pulled in today. And that's considered one of the fastest muscle cars that you can get today. And this, Bang for buck, drivability wise, this is a multi hundred thousand mile engine because it's not making enough power to really do any damage to itself. This thing, you can turn the key, let it go all day long. If we had to drive from here to California right now, we could do it, no problem, hands down, especially if you have fuel injection on it. They have a carbureted version as well, helps to keep the cost down a little bit and keep that period authenticity as well. What about transmission? Because with that horsepower, you can go with T5, which you is got a cheaper it. transmission. You got it. The good old T5 transmission, which is what was found behind your Fox Body Mustangs, that transmission is less expensive. And if you ask me, like Dave was mentioning earlier, honest opinions, a T5 is going to shift better than a TKO all day long. The TKO has to handle a much higher torque value than a T5 does. And because of it, those triple ring synchros and dual synchros they've got just make the shifting action a lot more gated. So you feel like every time you shift, you almost dislocate your shoulder or your elbow versus a T5, you can sneeze on it and it goes from first to second. It makes for a very drivable, very streetable package. All right, so Tony's driven this car. Now, here's my opinion. I'm gonna show Tony my opinion. Here's my opinion of this engine. See this? Perfect, right? I mean, can you see that close up? All right. All right, Tony, tell me, on this engine, this car, this performance, horsepower, weight, everything, what's your vote on this? I mean, you guys picked this for a reason, because obviously Adam's a newbie, and you don't want anybody to hurt themselves, but I think anybody out there is actually going to want bang for buck. Like Dan said, this is bang for buck. Turn the key and have a transmission engine package for $5,500 is unheard of. So a guy to get in the game and have a car for thirty-five dollars that he can drive and have fun and go anywhere with, it's a no-brainer. 
And by the way, this is an engine that you can bolt a supercharger on. You can yep. do anything. This thing is After so tough. After the fact, you can do whatever get you want. Get used to it. Get Maybe you're a little jaded with the power. Add some on and later. What we tell every customer right, is get the, in the game. Tony, you're the first judge coming up. Value on this engine. It's one out of ten. Ten. To ten. I'm a ten. Uh, performance. Five. It's got a little looks, horsepower. Looks. Eight. And the last one is drivability fun. Ten. A ten. Honest to God. Wow. I drove this car and we do a build for St. Jude's Hospital every year. And the engine that we get for St. Jude is this engine. And I kid you not, this year we built the car three days, Ron Everton and I and a couple guys from FedEx, they're pilots. We took the car with no body on it and we drove it down the road day two. And I could not believe when I came back, everybody had to take the car for a ride. We put the body on it day three. I gave it to Mike. I said, hey, take it for a ride. He's gone for 40 minutes. He took it down to the store to get oil. So the drivability of these engines are just so far big fun. superior. So the conclusion on this engine, you want to have fun, and, and maybe your ego is strong enough that you don't need 500 horsepower and you can be honest about it. It reminds me of Lotus, you know? Lotus sports cars were lightweight, horsepower balanced. The guys that love them love them for a reason. More fun than you can have. It is. And a great starting point I've and a great said, value. Do you want the car to drive you or do you want to drive the car? All right, now we're going to talk about the next step up. So Dave, we got the stock 302. Let's go to the next push rod engine which is basically what the whole aftermarket 5.0 did, a hot rod at 302. Yep. So this is Blueprints, what is it, it's a 306. 306. And Dan, help me out, this is aluminum heads, aluminum 370 heads. horse, Correct. 345 foot pounds of torque, so it's a, a much, it's a, it's a lot more. And it's one of those things yeah, that so these guys can carry you. What's, what'll happen is, basically, this engine is just gonna make more power. The combustion chambers are redesigned. You've got your spark plug location is now ideal. The valve size is increased. Basically, everything has been improved over the old cast iron design. So this aluminum head plus it shaves some weight. And for all you guys out there, you know, like our engineer Jim, he always is, uh, he's this crazy guy who likes to make things as light as possible. So aluminum heads are gonna save you dozens of pounds off a set of cast iron heads, which means lower weight, Effectively, that means now you've got more usable power because now the vehicle overall is lighter. So it's one of those things that this is going to be that next step up. So if you want that extra 60, 70, 80 horse that you're going to be able to get, this is definitely the way to go. A little bit more torque as well. And if you want to cut that horsepower down by 80, you can bolt on these Webers <laughs> right off the bat. They run like crap right out of the box, right? We're well, going to be honest here. Yeah, we're going to be very honest. No, so, I but they guys. look cool. I mean, you got to admit, hey, exactly. what looks right cool now this looks the part. Look at this car. This looks just like it jumped out of the most recent Ford versus Ferrari movie. And I will, I, like I will defend the Webers. Out. At wide open throttle, they're wonderful. They're fantastic. So at full throttle, they're great. And this is the horsepower. So you're talking about a car that we went from that 302, which makes 235 horse, maybe 0 to 60 in four seconds flat. Maybe a 12, 12, 5 quarter mile. Well, you can still now, burn first and second. Oh, no doubt about it. You can break you can loose still at, break will, loose at first will. and second. Now this motor, you're a couple more grand more. Tony, what's this uh, from Blueprints? About five grand? Four well, five? Turkey bags, now these are gonna come. With transmission. They bolt up a TKO to these. So to do a T5, you'd have to ask for T5. Because they think horsepower rating wise, they'd rather see a TKO 500 or 600 behind it. So that out the door, carbureted is around 14. That out the yeah. door. Which is still bang for buck. I mean, it's dressed, it's dyno tuned, you have a number. If anything is ever gonna fail, it's gonna fail on the dyno before you get it. So, in my eyes, the warranties that they give are a great warranty, but just aside alone from that is you have a break in process. And once the break in process is done, you're not putting an engine in. If God forbid something goes wrong, you gotta yank it out. So, that, that process is done for you, which is really nice. All right, so now we're gonna go one step up on the push rod motors. Now, we're not gonna talk FEs right now, but we are gonna talk 427s. The Windsor Block is famous for stroking it's 427. You want a 427 in your car? Put one of the Windsors in there. Now, Blueprint sells a version. Ford Motorsports, uh, Ford Performance mm -hmm. has a great 535 horse version. They do. There's some differences between them. You were telling me about the, about the Boss Block. Yep. Let's look at the 427 over here. So, we've got the FIA USRC car with the 289. Over here, we've got our 427. So, this is Blueprint's engine, but Ford sells a, a similar 427 stroke 351. Yep. Uh, Dan, tell me the specs on this motor. I think it was 480 horse and like 520 pounds feet of torque. Exactly. No, this thing is the biggest and baddest that you're going to be able to get out of the small block territory and still maintain some drivability and maintain some reliability. Obviously, as those of us who know engines well know, the bigger cubic inch displacement we get this engine, the longer the stroke, the bigger the bore, now everything is getting 
thinner. Cylinder walls are getting thinner. Now we're adding more heat to the engine because now we've got more room for combustion. Well, all of that adds stress to the power plant. So while there is bigger cubic inch small blocks, this is about as big as I would wanna see somebody go and still have a street drivable machine. Now, like Dave was mentioning, this thing's borderline 500 horse, it's over 500 foot pounds of torque. And what I was mentioning earlier, that power to weight ratio. Let's do a quick calculation here. Let's say this thing comes in at about 2,500 pounds and that would be a little bit on the heavy side. Let's say you have a stereo, you have sound dead, a thing of that nature, and you're 2,500 pounds. Your power to weight ratio, if you're making 500 horse, that's one to five. One to five is better than the C8 Corvette. That's better than a Hellcat. That's better than my GT350. That has gone above and beyond. So for you horsepower guys, here it is. And let me mention to you as well, even with that, this is a handful. Any of us here who have driven it, Dave's driven it, Tony's driven it, me, you have to be careful with a power level like this. But it's also very fun and very cool to have because when you fire it up, all that displacement, gives you that sound coming out of the exhaust that basically you can't replicate. What's, what the, what's about the most important part though? The sound. No. 427 sound. Imagine, imagine, wow. it's a real 427. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Guys, a dealer's choice. Honorable mention at the end of this, we're talking about the engines we have in stock and there's some more, but uh, Judge, Tony Judge the 302, mm -hmm. on the, on the, now there's a lot of money. This is 18, 20 grand for you this car. You got um, it. So value, one to 10. Value, I'd probably give it a five. Uh, looks. Looks especially either in carbureted or fuel injected form, I'm gonna give this thing a nine. And performance. Performance, eh, you're gonna have a tough time beating it. I'm gonna say give it an eight. And drivability. Drivability, especially in fuel injected form for a push rod motor, I'm gonna give it an eight. This All right, now I gotta tell you, and, and you know, we're being honest here, Blueprint, I love these guys and they're great. And we had a motor, uh, an exhaust valve dropped off in a guy's 427, he had like 300 miles in the car. Blueprint replaced that motor, no questions asked, no fuss, no must. They had it done. These are hand-built engines. They did, I think they turned it around in about five weeks, maybe four weeks. This motor here though, it comes with a Holley 850. Yeah. Now they put that on there to get big numbers. You want this car, you want this engine, you want big numbers. But I gotta tell you, let's be honest, that 850 sure. is a lot of car. And what happens is I've driven the car and, and I gotta tell you, on the street you want torque and, and you knock it down to a Holley 750. 750 all day long different. Now, how about you this? You get your dyno sheet from Blueprint, yeah, with the 850 on it, so you can brag to your friends that you made your 500 horse and some change. Put a 750 on it and drive it all day long. The torque difference was amazing. Now, I have two of my very good friends, Al Toon, who played in the NFL. He asked me, spec me out a Daytona Coupe with this motor in it, and also uh, the guy that runs my gym wanted a 427, he wanted the bad Larry. We, we knocked that carburetion down so much better driving from a torque standpoint. Yeah. Acceleration off the line and around town. That 2,000 RPM to roll on the gas, it feels like an elephant standing on your chest. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fun. Most guys go with a sniper or the Fitech, however they do it. That Which makes a huge difference, that right? That will be adjusted for you. Yep. So I think if guys are going to spend the extra money to, to do that, just go with fuel injection sound. Roger. And then it's going to calibrate itself. Exactly. All right, all day long. <laughs> so, so those are the push rod motors. We're going to talk honorable mention later. But now we're going to go to the modular engines. And I think what we'll do after this, we'll start them up and, and, sure. and just listen to each one. That way you guys can wait through. I'm sure there's a ton of questions, but remember what we said. Opinion based on our use. Everybody's got their own, you know, uh, opinion on this. The 5 -0. Um Tony, you were telling me of the mix of guys building, let's just talk about the Roadsters. How many guys are going with a 5 -0 as a percentage of guys that buy Roadsters? 50 -50. Gee, it's a half the guys. But look yeah. at our showroom, my 20th anniversary car, 5-0. Hot Rod, 5-0. Hot Rod Truck, 5-0. My Daytona Coupe, 5-0, right? Challenge car, those two. Challenge cars are 5-0, right. But now Coyote. we got a 5-2 over here, but that Coyote is just ubiquitous. It's a great engine. <laughs> I mean, it reigns supreme for a reason. It's the evolutionary upgrade of that old Pushrod 302. Let's Ford, go look at it in the car. Ford I think we have, we have a, a Gen 2 engine over here. Yeah. Come on over, Dave. Actually, that's a, that's a Gen 3. All right. So Gen 3, as you can see here, this is Ford's latest and greatest. It's making 460 horse. It's making about the same in torque as well, maybe a tad bit lower. The nice thing about this engine, right from Ford, it comes right off their main assembly line. So Ford's building hundreds, if not thousands of these a day. So you want to talk about technology and reliability, this is going to be another multi-hundred thousand mile engine. At the same time, 
It has Ford's latest and greatest technology in it. So when you turn the key, it fires up and it comes to the same idle each and every single time. When you look at it on a dyno, gone are the days with this engine of a horsepower and torque curve. The curve doesn't exist, it's a line. The thing basically shoots up and makes all its power, all its torque from 2000 to 6500 RPM. That's virtually unheard of, but when you've got twin independent variable valve timing, this has twin injection. It is direct port and sequential port fuel injection. When the computer, as advanced as it is, is taking over this engine, this thing is smarter than us. Let's, let's be real here. This engine is more intelligent than we are. So when you hop in, it is going to be the nice engine where if you lay off the gas and you're going through that nice little town with all those glass window stores, you're not going to blow the windows out like you would with that big old 427 over there. But when you get through that little town and go to get on the highway and you hit that accelerator, everything comes to life. I like to call this engine Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, because that's kind of the syndrome that it has. It's that friendly doctor and then it's that evil menace all in the same power plant. All right, so Dan, and I should pick, when you were grading the 302, the old five liter, I had a picture of a golden retriever. If the old 302 is a golden retriever, this is a golden retriever that was mixed with a pit bull. So, but, but maybe below about 5,500 RPM, it's all golden retriever. It's wonderful, it's streetable, it's quiet. You crack 5,500, 6,000 RPM, and it's like secondaries come on. That variable valve time or whatever, holy crap, it is a, a, a rabid beast. So it's pit bull and golden retriever in one engine. There's no surprise why we sell a ton of them. 430 horsepower, and it winds to 7,000 RPM. Yep. And you're telling me it's smart enough to not blow itself up. So you're not going to float a valve. It's not, <laughs> not the old push rod engines that you can over rev and blow up, right? right? That doesn't exist. Yeah. Everything is built into the computer. You, you would have to try to hurt the engine. You would have to actually make an attempt to hurt the motor because it has so many safeties built into it that it's difficult to do. It's, it's, it'll throw an error code if you've got too much water in the gas. <laughs> it's so Dan, uh, and, and Tony, what are some of the things we do on this engine? Because you can't just drop it in a, in a Mark IV. So what are the things that the guys do before we ship this engine out and that you have to do? Well, Dave, Dan does Dave it. actually put it together. Yeah. So I mean, you can go through it. Basically, what we've got is we dump the alternator on it, get that taken care of for you. We change the oil pan. That's a big one. The oil pan's got to be the Moroso Road Race pan with a low sump in order to clear the frame. We go ahead, drop the transmission on, get the clutch in place, get that taken care of for you. Um, for those guys who have hot rods, we go ahead and put on the reverse mount alternator for you, which is, takes a little bit of time. Um, put the engine cover on, get the starter in place. Um, we also have this cool little engine stand, as you can see here, so you can actually take the engine and roll it around your shop. I don't know too many people that have this. And you I wish. The trans so I'll yes. Add, you yep. Trans we've got T56s. We've got TKOs available, and we've also for the hot rod guys, especially in trucks, we've got automatics now as well. So there's a bunch of different options from us now. That whole value and everything that Dave was talking about earlier. There is one thing I'm going to touch on for you guys out there. Unfortunately, when it comes to the aesthetics of this engine, it's not the prettiest. That's going to be its one downfall besides What about limitations big. on induction, though? Because I noticed, like, I've got a, a, a Cobra Jet intake yes. over here, and so I noticed on the 5.2 we got a Cobra Jet. You got if you're doing a Cooper or a hot rod, you can't run those. Correct. So what are the Clearance. limitations on that with our other line? Clearance is an issue. So right, hot rods, a, This is a Gen 2 motor, right? Yes. So hot rods are trucks. You're going to have to run the stock intake. That's pretty much what you're limited to. Now, if you're running in a Cobra or even a Coupe, you can get away with a Boss intake or Cobra Jet. Coupe is going to be really tight, but Roadster, as you can see, you still got some clearance to the hood. Now, the Cobra Jet intake does a really good job of making that engine, which, for again, all of, all of us purists out there, it looks like plastic because it is plastic. But to make this engine look a little bit nicer, you can see we got the nice valve cover or coil covers on it. We could change the intake on it. That can help that engine quite a bit. But again, the other thing you gotta take care of is this engine's pretty big. It's 28 inches wide. To give you guys a quick it dimension fills the overall, bay, huge. it LS. fills the engine What's bay. What's the width of an LS? A LGM LS motor is 21 and a half, which is oh. the same width oh. as a 351 Windsor. So this engine has got a good three inches per side wider. Now for you FE guys out there, which Dave's gonna touch on in a bit, the FE is only about 26 inches wide. So this makes an FE look small. Even though it's only 302 cubic inches, those cylinder heads, and again, the VVT, the twin cam, all that takes up space. So that is its one downfall. It still is very lightweight, even though it's physically big. It's about 444 pounds fully dressed. 
which today for a small block, that's pretty darn good. All right, so Judge Zulo, um, value on this engine, value one to ten. It's an eight. It's an eight on value. I'll give it an eight on um, value. Looks five. It's a five well, on looks. Depending on intake. If some people it, love that modern look, but that, five. It's not pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty. pretty. I'm with you. It's pretty the old remember the 8793 with the plenum oh, and the wow. weird yeah, it's this. So uh uh looks, uh value, performance. Ten. Ten out of ten on performance. Ability, ten. All right, because we're gonna get to the five too. And drivability fun. Ten, just gotta be careful. Wow. That's why we sell power. so many. You gotta be careful. Alright, so let's go over to the five two monster. Uh mm -hmm. where's my stuff? That's the anniversary car. Yeah, so in our latest car, our twenty-fifth anniversary car. We put Ford's, oh, those guys from here. Why don't we start this one? And it uh, hasn't been started for a while. So, Dan, will back me up on specs. Yep. So, if you guys know this engine as the Coyote, but it's a 5.2, it's got more displacement, it's a different block, correct? Yes. So, it's a different block, but it shares heads with your GT350 correct. motor. So very similar heads to GT350. It's got a cross plane crank, not a flat plane crank. Correct. So that changes the firing order, but it's a much better balanced engine. Correct. I gotta tell you, we bought a Voodoo engine. It's in the back of R&D when we're gonna use it in the F9R, yep. right? We bought a Voodoo engine, but I gotta tell you, what engine do I wanna put in the car for testing? The cross plane crank is a better balanced engine. It makes 580 horsepower, 580 horsepower. And what is the torque on this? I can't remember. I think it's like 500 foot pounds of torque. It's, star, it's yeah. just over 500, it's over 500 if I remember correctly. And 500. the RPM is the real key thing. You can go 7,500. I think Ford even says you can go to 8,000 without a problem with this guy. So the RPM range, you're just yes. upping it to close to what NASCAR specs were or what a lot of small displacement, two liter, two five, four cylinders, they're known for going 8,000, 10,000 RPM, not a 5.2, which is roughly about 318 cubic inches or so V8. Um, this thing is an animal. Ford basically cherry picked a lot of the GT350 parts that they knew was good. Then they custom came up with a custom computer set up for it. They came up with a custom set of cams for it. This thing basically is a cherry picked version of what the Ford engineers at over Ford Performance wanted to see the Coyote be. This is what they did, and this is what they came up with. Well, and let's see if it starts. I haven't started for a long time. It's been in the show for a while. We built this car for our 25th anniversary, but. It, if the 5.0 is a golden retriever and a pit bull crossed, this is a, a, a golden retriever with rabies and a pit bull with rabies. I mean, even at idle, Tony, this thing's loud. It is. I mean, let's see if it starts. But a race motor. I mean, it's sold in street guys, but in a 2,250 <laughs> pound car with this motor. Well, what do you think of that car I mean, being in the Daytona Coupe? Like you've driven Legano's Coupe with that engine. Well, you know what? And that's a great question because what Tony brings up is we don't have aerodynamics in that. We don't have aerodynamics in the Cobra. So with this car, with that thing, that can handle that power because the faster you go, you get downforce. But in this car, I mean, you're just going to shred tires. And it's going to shred your eardrums while you're doing it. We do have it. a lot of customers that actually got their hands on a couple. Because at first, they weren't actually, they had them up. And then, watch it, the one we got for that car was hand-built. Remember, we actually got that from Ford. Hand-built for us, number one. We put in that car that we had customers that wanted it like crazy. So they had them on a waiting list. And a lot of people, I don't know the customer's name, one guy that had got it. Um, and he was one of the few that actually got them. But money-wise, they're expensive, too. They're about 17000 just for the engine. So all in transmission, so, everything, you're 22 grand. You're, but I'm buying a, a 427 at 2022, so right. it's the bang for buck. What do you? Yeah, it's old school versus new school. Because tech wise, you're probably, you probably got more horsepower in the modular right? You have more power coming more. out of that, but what do you want it to look like? Yeah, I looked it up, it's 450 foot pounds of torque, so yeah. it's a little less torque than the, than, than, the, than the 427. The sound, the sound is also going to be a little bit different. Yeah, Even a little more crisp. That, engine, yeah. that engine's going to be a little bit more refined. That engine's gonna have a little bit more of a modern day take on it versus this guy. Let's, uh, let's see if I can get this thing started. This thing, let's say fire it up. So that's basically your 5.2. Uh, so that's 
So that's going to be, that's your refined setup. Now this guy. Oh, let him go, let him go, let him go. Come on. To believe. You want to get the jump box while we're talking? Yeah. We'll get the jump box. We'll talk about something else. Um, I've got to start this car with these guys because it's just, it's a totally, it's, it's throatier. It's a deeper resonance. Yes. But it's a much lumpier. You it sounds like a hot rod cam. I mean, feel this engine right here. You feel yeah. it in your chest. Every single revolution, every single explosion of the cylinder, you feel in your chest. And you don't have a choice whether you like it or not. It's there. And for a lot of hot rodders, that, that's the definition of a hot rod. That's what you got to feel. That's it. All right, so now let's talk about honorable mention. I'll start out, go to Dan and go to Tony while we're getting the jump box on this. Um, you know, I'm going to save the LS and I'm going to mention the LS7 for you because you're Mr. LS. That's okay. Um, honorable mention, if I got to pick an engine that it is not everybody's favorite engine, I'm going to pick the FE, and that's my personal friendship with with Al Adkins and his love affair with that engine. A lot of guys love that FE. You know, um, Bill from Southern Automotive passed away in March. One of the smartest guys, one of the greatest guys here. He built a 427 for me, an FE. Remember in, what was it, 67, the Mustang, the Galaxy, the Fairlanes came out with, they had the 390, and it was 67, 68. Yep. 67. 67, I believe. So that 390 Torinos. came out, and, right, yep. And, and the 390 then became the 427. There's there's a lot of legends of the 47, the W Code Mustangs. There's the 427 side oiler. I drove Dick Smith's car, and that thing had 600 horsepower. Now, that was a race motor, nasty, nasty motor. And I mean, if you wanted, it, it just, so the guys who are purists who want that original motor, you're going to pay huge now. With Bill gone, I don't know really who's doing 427 motors. But the internals are expensive, the engines are expensive, the heads are expensive, everything about them are expensive. Heavy clutch, you know, don't put a top loader transmission, for God's sakes, don't do that. That would be the worst thing in the world. As a matter of fact, if we find out, we will f fly to your house and beat you up for doing that. We will. Well, he will. And he will, not me. I'm, I'm, I run. I used to run in track. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a flight guy, not a fight guy. So, is this a good start? Go ahead, jump in. Dan yeah. did it. <laughs> like I say, for anything, for, for sound, this is, out of anything in here, this sounds amazing. But without that fuel injection, drivability is yes. going to be a little bit less. Yeah, yeah. It's not, I mean, the drivability just isn't great, but I mean, you're comparing it to a brand new car. Dan's used to a brand new car. I am. You are. You're, you're getting into a brand new GT350 Mustang, and you're like, well, a carburetor sucks. Well, yeah, it's not what you're trying to do, you know? And if you want, you know, fuel injection on a carbureted setup, you can do that, which... I think 90% of the guys out there are going to do, we did it on Adam's car, and you turn the key and it fires and it runs every time. You, you can't underestimate fun of driving. I mean, I got to tell you, you know, so many times that carbureted engine, I don't jump in and drive it, whereas the anniversary car with the Coyote, I jump in, turn the key and go. For that reason. And I, I'll tell you what, I should be a poster child for what not to do to a Ford Coyote engine. Turn that key, drop the hammer, full throttle, 10,000 miles sideways. The engine has never had a chance to warm up. It's either been red hot or stone cold. And Free it does transmission it. in 4,000 miles. Yeah, think about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little hard on stuff. Anyway, all right, so my honorable mention was the 427 FE. If you want the billboards, the 15-inch wheels, the Smith's gauges, reverse read, the old school stuff that I like so much, that 427 can't be beaten. It can be beaten in a lot of different ways, but that has that essence of it. If you want the number, you want the cool sound and all that stuff, but you don't want all, all the issues, go with the modern 427 based on the Windsor block engine. Mm -hmm. Dano, honorable mention, any crate engine you want, and there's no blasphemy, LS guys. <laughs> for those of us out there who like GM LSs, I'm one of those guys. For the, many of you out there who know me, I had a 66 Mustang before I had the GT350. Oh. And yes, I'm going to put that out there. It's, it, did have, it did have an LS1 in it, for those, know, those of you out there. Dave. This, those things happen. My Type 65 Coupe has a twin turbo 6 liter LS in it. 
it's one of those things that for me personally, that engine is very inexpensive to get power out of. It's very durable. It's very fun and like easy how to expensive? make it look. Well, uh, to give you an idea, Dave, it's not uncommon for Tony and me to find a 5.3 truck motor for $300. And yes, I said that right. It's $300 for a complete engine from a junkyard. Now, this is a truck engine. It's also a probably 110 to 150,000 mile engine. But for those of us really on a budget, you put a cam in it, you clean a few things up, you rebuild a couple things, give it a water pump, freshen up the gaskets. For less than a thousand bucks, you can easily have a 300 plus horse engine all day long. And if you're not that lucky, for 2,500 bucks, you're in for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Now, for those of you out there, this is a little, this is kind of a secret that we kept, but it's out there a little bit if you've looked. We do have an engine mount setup and a header setup if you want to run an LS in a coupe or in a Mark IV. Now obviously don't tell your Ford buddies about this. That's one of those things you don't want to do. But for those of us LS guys out there, we are supporting it for you guys because again, it is being a universal hot rod engine for those reasons that I just mentioned. So from my perspective, honorable mention is going to be the GM LS series of V8s. All right, so, um, and I chose a lot. We were doing an LS3 and we ran 512 horse on an LS3. And the guys were saying they had an LS7 the week before that they were like 560, 570 horse on the LS7 that was rated at 505. So that engine makes a ton of horsepower. It's a 427, but you're talking about the width. It's a tiny little motor. It's, and it's a push rod motor. It's old school 427, but it's aluminum block, handmade, dry sump race motor. I've got it in my GTM and I gotta tell you, it's, it's a hard motor not to give an honorable mention to. Maybe it's a little bit of yesterday's technology and everything's all focused on supercharging, tur twin turbos and all that, but you can buy that engine for 10 grand right now online. It's a brand new motor. It's making 560 horse for 10 grand. All of them, it's a race motor, hand built. I gotta give honorable mention. Tony, you've, you've built just about every car in the showroom. What engine do you think, and, and you can check, and, and, and if you wanna go Chevy, you wanna go put that Mopar mention in, what engine would you say honorable mention for a guy who wants to be a little bit off the beaten path? I think the Mopar stuff's cool because I think the Mopar guys are far and few between that we think so, but we don't. I mean, they're, they're out there. So we had done the speed star, so the hot rod, the truck, we'll all accept that stuff. Honestly, I, I'm a sale guy, so I'm a bang for buck guy. So I think if a guy's going to get into the game, I think they all have a specific amount of money that they want to spend in the end. And to me, I think a iron head or an aluminum head 302 is just the way to go. Dave once called a golden retriever, and I agree 100%. I think it's what most people would go with because it's just – it works. It's worked for 25 years. It's worked in the Challenge Series. It's worked throughout the years. Um, it's hard to beat that engine. It just is. And it's just hard to beat. And it's, they're pretty. You can make them look pretty. You can inject them. Mm -hmm. You can carburetor them. You can air clean them. Valve covers. I mean, if you look at Adam's motor in that car, it's a pretty motor. What about honorable mention for the engine that was in the old coupe? That was a 363 right from Ford. Yeah. And that thing was a bear. You can buy that for 10 grand right now. 10 grand, 360, that made 425 rear wheel. At the tire. At the tire. Yeah. So that's a 500 horse engine. I will have that was to, beast. I will have to admit, as far as sound is concerned, Amazing. I think that 363 would rival this 427 for sound because the bore and the stroke are basically very balanced when you look at them. I don't remember the numbers offhand. I want to say it's a 3.7 bore and a 4.125 stroke, um, but I'm not 100% on that. But when you look at it geometrically, it's a balanced engine, so the RPMs are there. And when you fire it up, it's, it has this thump that a big block doesn't have and a regular small block 302 doesn't have. It's really not describable. And it has to do with that match of that bore and that stroke. And that thing... I, I missed it walked that. away from I that flame hot rod. Oh yes, which was, so which was a coyote. That was a coyote. Oh, that was a coyote, coyote, coyote. Tuned up. What was that down in Mustang Fords when we were doing a dyno? When was no, that? No, it was Power Tour. Me and oh, Freddy. Power Tour, you guys were driving. <laughs> <racing. laughs> Freddie and I, and Freddie had the day doing a coupe, and yeah. you thought all day long that coyote would walk away from it. No way. It left it. Third gear, it, he just crawled away. Right. I think when we dyno a coyote, and it was a Gen 1 or Gen 2 engine, it was like 390 horse rear wheel. Yep. That was 426, 427 rear wheel. It showed. So you would agree, honorable mention, that 363 Ford is a sweetheart little push rod motor. I'm good with that. Yeah, good motor. Yep. Guys, um, let's play with some cars. I'll start, let me start this stock car here. This is a 302. 
Anything you guys got to say on engines? I know there's gonna be a ton of questions. We'll jump online mm -hmm. because we're not reading the questions. Maybe Mad Dog, if they're, I don't want to be unfair because there's probably 300 questions and, and you're gonna pick one of them and you know and then Al will get butt hurt that I didn't answer his FE question. Those damn FEs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said enough about it. I love you, Al. Let's try a uh, stock 302 here. Look at that five tap, right? You gotta leave. It. I didn't touch it. Okay. It's hard for you guys. The thing is, whenever you shut the power down, does it reset the computer? Oh, wait. So, the, whenever you shut the power down on all those injection systems, what happens, it resets itself. It's going to be no. sit too long so we shut the power key off which shuts down all the computers so it's got to reset it's got to reset so a quick tire. tech note for you guys on this if you have fuel injection definitely make sure that you run a battery tender versus using the battery cutoff all the time the battery tender is going to keep the keep alive memory alive inside the computer so that it doesn't have to relearn all the time just like you saw what happened to us here and let's go dave with the uh challenge card um, so stock five, uh, stock five liter. You heard the the rabid beast five two. I gotta tell you, I think the five liter sounds a little, just a little bit more, and that's why it's so streetable. It's yeah. why everybody likes it so much because you turn the key and it runs. It's fuel injected. Um, and we haven't started this car in how long? I think I started for one of the YouTube videos about three weeks ago. Two oh. weeks ago. Monoxide, so now we can't breathe. Ah. Yeah, I know. Does it smell good? It smells We fantastic. put race gas in all the cars, so you can't smell it, but we can. It tears you up. Um, guys, a lot of fun. Uh, Tony and Dan, thank you for coming in today. Um, we'll go online and check out any comments. Dave out. That was 35 minutes, man. Was that long? Nice. I'm back. This whole thing is nice. Check this out. It's a lot. You want to clear the show?